is that my formal training uh, is in engineering. Uh, so that's the way I view the world. I tend to take an engineering approach, if you will, to understanding opportunities and problems. And that'll be quite evident in the course of what I say to you this morning. I also would like to explain up front uh, that, as Dick mentioned, it is very unlikely that you're going to hear anything from me this morning that you've never heard before because I have not invented anything new. As a matter of fact, uh, 20 or some years ago, it became very clear to me that fundamentally I am much more of a mechanic uh, than I am a philosopher. But along the way, I have come across some things that have worked for me. And what I would like to do this morning is to try to share a few of those with you in the hope that it might make a very challenging task of managing an organization in these interesting times a bit more successful and what's just as important from time to time perhaps a little bit more fun. Imagine with me for a moment that you are confronted by a bright eight-year-old. Uh, now the reason I like to pick, right, pick a bright eight-year-old, it's pretty difficult to bamboozle a bright eight-year-old. You know, they don't bite on cynicism or anything like that. And so this bright eight-year-old confronts you and asks you, what do you do for a living? Well, most of us would say, um, we're managing an organization of some consequence. See, except an eight-year-old doesn't understand what you're talking about. I mean, if you told an eight-year-old, for example, that you were an airplane pilot, or a truck driver, all right, now they understand what you do for a living. But when we manage, what is the activity? You know, when I was running the Deutz Diesel division in Germany, uh, I remember a reporter came to interview me one day and uh, got a hold of my secretary, Frau Poschmann, and he asked her, oh, what does Herr Schutz do all day long? Well, she told him, he has meetings and he talks on the telephone. And I was trying to get on the same page with 700 managers, and so I threw out a question. I said, how many of you believe uh, that you are operating an organization in a very competitive business environment? How many of you would say that's what's happening at Toyota? It's a very competitive operating environment. In those circumstances, I ask them, how many of you believe that you would like to have an edge on your competition? How many of you would like to see an edge, right? So then I ask them, remember this was Arthur Anderson, uh, how many of you believe that the competitive edge at Toyota can consist of hiring the world's smartest accountants? <laughs> Well, now look, let me ask you, is it important to have a smart accountant? Yes. You bet it is. If you don't have smart accountants, you can't even get into the game. But it's not going to be a competitive edge. I agree with that. You see, then I asked them, how many of you believe that your competitive edge can consist of having a product or an innovation that is superior to that which the competition has? How many of you believe that's going to be your edge? You know, many years ago, I uh, was privileged to serve as vice president of sales and service for Cummins Engine Company in Columbus, Indiana. And uh, I was a member of a very bright young team of managers. One of the other members of that management team, who is now retired, was a man by the name of Vaughn Beals, who later in his career turned Harley Davidson around, you know, brought them back from nowhere. Another member of that management team recently retired as chairman of Lucent Technologies, a man by the name of Henry Schacht. We were young and we were bright and we had a lot of great new ideas. The patriarch of Cummins Engine Company is and was a man by the name of Erwin Miller, one of the most highly principled people it has ever been my privilege to be associated with. Mr. Miller has had a profound impact on the way I have conducted myself in my private and professional life. Every time this group of young tigers had one of these great new ideas. 
Mr. Miller had a way of sitting us down and explaining one more time. Any advantage you will ever have in competition that is the result of invention or innovation will be fleeting and fickle. If it is a really good idea, count on it. Others are going to jump on your bandwagon and they will once again level the playing field. How many of you believe, I asked, that your competitive edge can consist of finding and hiring people that are more intelligent and more innovative than those that work for your competitors? How many of you believe that?